Back in 1995, a French entrepreneur and yachtsman called Michel Ducran decided to set up a marina in Monaco offering refit and maintenance services. As he built up the business, he began to realize that the only way to provide a top-notch service was to have a network of shipyards close to the cruising hotspots all along the Côte d'Azur. And in fact, today, Monaco Marine has a string of nine such shipyards from Monaco to Marseille, and the company's CCO is Michel's son, Tanguy Ducroix. Of Monaco Marine's multiple sites, the ones that interest us most at Superior Times are the ones in La Ciotta, not far from Marseille, and La Seine-sur-Mer, close to Toulon, where we happen to be right now. And that's because they're the ones specializing in Superiots, with the infrastructures to deal with Superiots over 50 meters in length. What we have is uh, a very vast berthing area. Where, uh, about 20 yachts can, uh, can moor up to. Um, then a trav lift, 560 ton, um, to access 40,000 square meters of dry dock. So we can fit in, again, about 20 yachts. Plus, uh, on top of which, we have a very vast um, shaded areas. Um, so one is dedicated to uh, paintworks, where we can fit in a 50 meter uh, yacht and do paintworks. And the other is mainly used for storage, but right now we're doing, we have a small yacht in there as well. Uh, and we can store all the tenders, all the equipments from the yacht. So it's very, uh, very useful. We quite like this space because we're like people working together and, and be yeah. together. The team spirit is very important to us. This is literally the nerve center of, uh, of the shipyard. Absolutely, this is the nerve center of the yard. Um, oh wow, look at this. Okay, yeah. oh, this is cool. This is indeed very cool. So this is the crew area. Okay. And this is only for crew where they can, you know, um, on weekends, after their uh, working days, you know, come here, chill out, play the pool. They have a bar, they can cook. You can see outside, there's, there's, oh, there's a, a decent, there's a decent yeah. barbecue, outdoor table, an impressive gym area. Oh, wow, this is, this is, this is better than the this gym is, I go to at home. This is better than many, uh, yeah, private gyms. It is. The beauty of having both of these yards operating quite close to each other and um, having this possibility, well, the, basically the, the range of yachts is, is not the same, but there's an overlap. The beauty of that is we can offer different services. For instance, the shaded area in the central area is very vast. So we can welcome the tenders of the bigger yachts that are in La Ciota for a long refit, and then we would uh, refit the tender radar in, uh, in La Seine-sur-Mer. We're doing a, a we're retrofitting um, stabilizers, ah, okay. zero speed stabilizers. Mm -hmm. They've been welded, then the weld is, is grinded again and then refilled again. The scaffolding is wrapped up, everything, because we've just done the first shoot. There's going to be another clear after that. Need to close the door, they're allowed one sugar cube of dust spread out over the whole boat. That's the tolerance they're working to. But now the propeller has come back a little bit and you can see that the key is coming with it. Mm. Which is not good because mm. then how can we remove it? It's going to hit mm. the threads. We're about 40 minutes down the road from Toulon in La Ciotat to join some of the crews for breakfast, a breakfast of freshly prepared crepe. After all, we are in France. As we saw in La Seine, keeping the crews happy is very important for Monaco Marine. Once considered 
extras, high-end amenities for crews is fully expected these days, not least because captains and chief engineers, chief stews, and even chefs are often involved in formulating the scope of refit work. So let's check it out. Uh, the crew events have been very good. Um, they have multiple multiple events on every month. Uh, our crew are probably the most active crew with Monaco Marine at the moment, possibly because we've got a full crew, whereas every other um, boat around here have gone down to minimal crew, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, particularly this weekend, between us and Monaco Marine, the whole crew are going skiing, Monaco Marine staff are going skiing, and they're all gonna have a fantastic time. The crew are, are definitely uh, one of the most important group of people that we have to take care uh, because we admire what they do. I think their work is, uh, um, is not easy, honestly, uh, it's really intense. And today I think the level of expectation is so high that they need to be 100% in their mind. There is no way you can provide a good service if you don't feel well. So we try to do everything that we can to make sure that they are mentally and uh, healthy and, um, and there are people amongst our organization who are only dedicated to make sure they're happy. I remember back in 2007 when Monaco Marine opened this facility in La Ciotat, just prior to the start of the global financial crisis, incidentally. The site itself covers around 45,000 square meters and has access to a 2,000 ton yacht lift, a 300 meter dry dock. But it's the 90 meter fully acclimatized paint shed that has become as much a local landmark in these parts as the big old gantry crane behind me with La Ciotat painted in huge letters, which dates back to the port's shipbuilding days. Justin, it all starts with this over there, which is the um, Synchrolift 2000 tons. You can see here the trolley, and just behind that is actually the yacht lift. Uh -huh. And then this trolley will access those slots. So we have nine slots over there. Uh, we have to keep one slot empty just to be able to move to move things to around. Move things around. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And on the other side, we have four slots. You can see one, two of them are busy there, and the fourth one is actually in the pine shed. It's busy as well. While we're here, we'll just run up the stairs and have a quick look from the from the top here because. Uh, this is an impressive space. So yeah, you can see that there, there's a good uh, 30 meters or so extra. Yes, yes. You can get a much bigger yacht in here. And loads yeah. of space above. Yeah, uh, an, 85, an 85 meter, the bow of an 85 meter will, will come up there, be just in front of us over there. We're going to see a 62 meter Amos that came to the shipyard in October to do the 20 year survey. So we're touching a lot of uh, uh, very important elements from the vessel, from the gearboxes to the shafts, uh, to the pro propellers. So it's mostly engineering. Some works in the interior. We have a bit of a paint job going on in, uh, in the front of the vessel. Yeah, this is the second time that we've brought Calypso to the yard. We were here last year. It was quite a time constraints uh, yard period. And I was impressed by the, the ability of the yard to deliver and to meet our timeline. So hence why this year we came back um, for quite a comprehensive 20 year survey. It's not necessarily open heart surgery, but it's um, pretty close to it. I have the impression that the, 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 um, the, the boat owners uh, and in general, the people in the industry are now um, much more aware of what we, we can do in terms of refit. Uh, where in the past it was, it, it makes more sense to build a new boat 
today we feel that the first first thing that comes to the mind of the owner is how he can refit his yacht and if it's going to suit his new needs or not and of course it's more sustainable um, it's cheaper most of the time and it's quicker and this is uh, i think where we had a good strategy because 20 years ago uh, we were trying to do a bit everything we were owning some new build shipyards. Back then the market was different, boats were much, much smaller. Uh, and then in, two, in the early 2000s, we really concentrate our strategy on, on doing only refit. And I think that was a really good move. Also, I think you're, in our position, we should have in mind that every year a boat should cruise with the owner. So when we have a big project, we try to understand how we can split the project in different phases in order to, to allow the owner to still cruise. In general, you can completely refit a boat over two years, split it in two, three period of, of eight months, six months, and there you go, you can use your boat every year. And that makes a big difference. What well, future plans are to seek for opportunities. And then of course, it's to grow on the West Med. So Spain and Italy, Florida, it's something that uh, you were speaking about the shipyard concentration uh, in the world. Florida is the number one. So really high competitive markets. But I think what we do here could work there uh, when we, we take a decision to acquire or to build a new shipyard. Uh, we, we think about it a lot and, and, and we measure the decision we're gonna make. Repeat business is the lifeblood of the refit industry. If a captain or owner is happy with the level of service they receive, they come back again and again. And by happy, I mean competitive pricing, timeliness, quality workmanship, and of course, as we've seen, modern crew facilities. There's certainly no lack of competition in this part of the French Riviera, which arguably has the highest concentration of refit yards of anywhere in the Mediterranean. But it strikes me that Monaco Marine is ticking all the right boxes because nearly 60% of their clients do come back for more.